Welcome everybody to another super informative edition of Breaking Point on Real America's Voice News, channel 219 on Dish Network and channel 240 on Pluto.tv. We have an action-packed show for you today. I'm so honored to have with us today Curtis Lee. We're running for mayor in New York City. He's the founder of the Guardian Angels. Then we have Larry Clayman, who's the founder of Judicial Watch and Freedom Watch. And then we have Ann Hendershot, who's an author. We're going to talk about Amy Koenig Barrett and bias against her uh, in the Supreme Court nomination. And then we have Marina Lini Kumari, who's the co-chair of Indian Voices for Trump. She's also a fashion executive in New York City who got together with 150 other CEOs demanding action by the mayor and the governor to help out New York City business. This election is only a week and a half away. Um, it's a very exciting time in this country. Um, I feel that we have to open up. Just remember the blue states have an 11 and a half percent unemployment and the red states have six percent. And all of the red states of New York and New Jersey. So we're doing something wrong. I think we got to open up and 90% of restaurants couldn't pay rent in August. So um, I want to start our show off by bringing on Curtis Sliwa. Uh, he's someone that I've uh, admired for, for 30, 30, 40 years, um, all the way back uh, when he founded the Guardian Angels and the Bernie Getz you know, shooting in New York City when, when New York was in really bad shape. And I feel like we're back there again. Curtis Lee, well, welcome to the show. A pleasure, and you couldn't be more hopelessly right. We are unfortunately <laughs> slipping back into the belly of the beast, back to the mean old 70s, 80s, and early 90s, which actually caused the birth, the baptism of the guardian angels. That's why I started it. They had cut back on cops. They had defunded the police department because of fiscal restraint. And uh, we filled the void. And so this is a lot more of what people are going to have to do in urban America. There's no money. And if they just think the Federal Reserve is going to just keep printing it out, you know, like they do in Venezuela, it ain't happening. So we're going to all have to learn to do more with less. Well, you've taken a lot of bold positions, and uh, I loved when you were talking to the residents of the Upper West Side, maybe it was a couple of weeks or months ago, uh, getting them motivated to try to take back their own communities. And, you know, you don't have to do it with guns. Um, you know, we have to be responsible citizens, patrol our neighborhoods. My son lives on the Upper West Side, and they opened up three homeless shelters out of hotels. And like you said, with no mental health support and none of the uh, support systems in place. Um, and then, you know, you have proposals uh, in your in your platform to run for mayor, like you know maybe some of the uh, calls involving mental stress or mental issues, you know maybe the cops shouldn't respond. Uh, we're facing major deficits, but you want more cops on the street, but maybe in the right places. Exactly. Look, I'm not your traditional Republican because I made my bones not in the suites of corporate America. That's important but in the streets. And there aren't that many candidates, Democrats or Republicans, who can say they have cred in the streets. So I deal with the emotionally disturbed, the homeless uh, people all the time. And I can tell you this, I don't know of one police officer, man or woman, who signed up to be having to do interventions with the emotionally disturbed. That's something that should be done, the interventions by healthcare professionals and by volunteers so that the police can do what it is we want police to do, get the guns off the street, get the gangs off the street, lock up the bad guys and bad gals. And the emotionally disturbed, they're really the fault of the state and the city who don't give them mental health care, don't hospitalize them, and then allow them to wander the streets as if they are cast characters and zombies in Dawn of the Dead. And these are liberals and progressives who are doing this. They claim that, you know, they're concerned about poor and impoverished people. I say double oofa. You would never abandon these people into the subways, the streets, and the parks of major urban America if you cared about them. Yeah, I feel that uh, the whole East Side, um, it, it smells like human waste and weed. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe what's happened. I'm um, very upset about Chelsea. I have a daughter who lives there. I'm, I'm worried she'll just disappear and nobody will find her. You know, it's like crazy. Um, I was watching this documentary with you uh, talking about Bernie Getz um, from, 19, from the 1990s, I believe. I don't know when it was made, but, um, you know, there was sentiment and support uh, for Bernie Getz in the sense that people were fed up. 
and when was somebody going to do something about it and take back their city? And you're, you're saying that you still get questions even today about uh, from people, you know, whatever happened with Bernie Getz, was he convicted? And we know he faced the gun charge. Um, but, you know, realistically, what can people do to take back New York? Is there any hope of getting de Blasio to act? We can't wait until June for our restaurants to open or Broadway. Uh, what, what's the solution here? Oh, wait a second. Boy, are you an optimist. <laughs> if Cuomo and de Blasio have it their way, we'll be in lockdown in perpetuity. Because remember, with the lockdown come these executive orders that they write every day. They don't have to go through the legislative process. They're not vetted. They basically have the power of little il duches. And don't think they're going to give that power up so easily. In fact, Cuomo has said, I will determine when the pandemic is over. Oh, excuse me, King Cuomo. So the problem is, we've got to figure out how we're going to survive in New York, keep New Yorkers to stay, because so many of them are abandoning, uh, abandoning the ship every day. There are moving vans. It's like convoys of them just moving out. And figuring out how we're going to be able to convince people who have the wherewithal to stay so that they can pay the taxes that subsidize all the social services. Cuomo has no idea on how to do that. Neither does de Blasio. And quite frankly, they don't care because it's our children and children's children's generation that's going to have to deal with this. That's why I want to do an intervention now and make sure we deal with it. The baby boomers and the hipsters and millennials and not just pass it on to our children and children's children. That's what all politicians do. That's what they're doing with the federal debt, the federal deficit. Hey, just keep raising the ceiling. You know, I wish I could do that with my own personal bills, you know? Tell the people, the creditors, hey, I want to raise my ceiling, you know? I just want to put off paying off the debt and deficit. Yeah, charge me whatever big you want. This is insanity, total insanity at the federal level, the state level, and the city level. Well, there was a there's a Gestapo out in New York City. You know, I was watching this guy in Coney Island the other day and uh, he had his door open to his restaurant and the guy came in and he gave him a fine. And the guy's like in tears. You know, he didn't even he can't even open as it is and stay open with the occupancy and take out menus and all this stuff that's going on. And these restaurants, 25 percent occupancy. Bad weather is here. Um, is it just. Uh, given that we're going to go into the tank and take years and years to recover, it, you know, who can lead us out of this? I know you could as mayor, right? Um, and anyone who has a real plan, you know, the cops don't want to patrol the street. They're calling in sick. They're retiring early. Um, what's the short term solution here to keep us moving? Well, remember, you have both Cuomo and de Blasio who are like uh, the Grim Reaper. All they do is they bring bad news, bad news, more bad news. There's nobody out there acting like a cheerleader. You know, I was uh, at total odds with Ed Koch when I started the Guardian Angels in 1979 because he kept referring to us as the Hell's Angels, uh, Vigilantes, Charlie's Angels, anything to disparage us. But the one thing I noticed as mayor, and he had inherited a city that was in fiscal decline that it cut all services where crime was rampant he was a cheerleader out there he was pumping up new yorkers he would have been going to the restaurants encouraging new yorkers to eat indoors encouraging people to take the subways because the subways are cleaner than they've ever been but our officials made you believe that the subways initially were a petri dish for the virus and then three months later after the lockdown they said lo and behold you are more likely to get coronavirus in your home amongst family and friends than you were with the strangers, the homeless, and the emotionally disturbed riding on the subways. And now we can't get them to ride on the subways. Used to be 5 million people a day on the subways, and now a million. And how are we going to subsidize this? So the point is, a mayor, whether it's a he or a her, they're going to have to be a cheerleader out there. They're going to have to be encouraging people on. They're going to have to be going to people who have fled, wherever they have fled to, and say, I want you to think twice, because I know you've hedged your bets. I know you still have your condo or your co-op here in the city, and you can't sell it now because the price has just crashed. So I want you to realize that with me as mayor, everything's opening up. We're going back to a 24-7, 365 city where it's exciting, it's vibrant, there's cultural opportunities. There are things that are stimulating. We're not going to be downtown Buffalo anymore after 11 o'clock at night. I can promise you that. 
Well, listen, I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. I, I like in your platform um, for your, your run for mayor that you're talking about home ownership opportunities for people like in these projects and other areas. I was part of the Anchor Revitalization Program when Giuliani was there, and it started with Kathy Wilde's New York City Housing Partnership uh, under previous administrations. And I watched, and we cleaned up streets in, in Skull Street and Brooklyn and Bushwick and uh, Brooklyn, Coney Island, you know, uh, Fulton Avenue in downtown Brooklyn. So we watched it firsthand. Uh, Curtis, where can our followers um, find you on the web? And um, we're going to close out. Well, right now, I don't have an official website for the mayoralty because the moment I do, they're going to try to kick me off of WABC, which is my bully pulpit. <laughs> so instead, just go to www.guardianangels.org, and you can see all the great things we're not only doing in New York City, but now in 13 countries and 130 cities around the world, all of whom are struggling with this pandemic and the various lockdowns that their local officials have imposed on them, which is causing them to be fearful in fright in hysteria and in flight. And we're going to stop that. We've stopped it as the guardian angels, and I'm going to stop it as mayor of the city of New York in 2021. Curtis Lewa, thank you so much for joining us. I want to have you back. There's so much to talk about, everybody. Uh, Curtis Lewa, founder of the Guardian Angels, running for mayor of New York City. This is David Zier. You're watching Breaking Point on Real America's Voice News.